One of my heroes is Ron Paul. Welcome back to the Junior Small Feet channel. Many of you know that I held the door open for Mr. Paul when he was running for president. I had the opportunity to meet him, to talk to him, and I fought for him during two of his elections. Very big fan of his. I've read several of his books, I've got his autograph on a couple of different things like books and uh, name tags and such. Got a lot of respect for him. Great, great mindset, good individual, and probably the best candidate to run for president in my lifetime and the best president we never had. He's got a lot of different things that he likes to talk about when it comes to precious metals, sound money, economics. Probably one of the only people to hold up a gold coin during testimony in Congress and show it to everybody while discussing economics and sound money. One thing Congressman Paul brings up is currency competition, uh, the, comp the need for having competition in currencies, how we need free competition in currencies. And that's a point that he raises uh, in this letter we're going to read, this article that he wrote here today. I'll put this in the speeches and writings category playlists so you guys can return to it at times. He says here, the prospect of American citizens turning away from the dollar toward alternate currencies will provide the necessary impetus to the U.S. government to regain control of the dollar and halt its downward spiral, he said. Restoring soundness to the dollar will remove the government's ability and incentive to inflate the currency and keep us from launching unconstitutional wars that burden our economy to excess, unquote. Paul said there were three steps needed to promote currency competition within the U.S., which are presumably required in his bill. This is about a bill that he wrote, which failed, of course, although it had not been released as of Wednesday morning. This all dates back to about 2011, back when Bitcoin was still foggy, just an idea, and there was, it was trading at about a dollar back in 2011. Bitcoin was a dollar, believe it or not. Now let's read uh, this letter by Mr. Congressman Ron Paul. The end of June marked what is hopefully the end of the Federal Reserve's policy of quantitative easing. For months, the Fed has purchased hundreds of billions of dollars of Treasury debt, enabling the government to fund its profligate deficit spending push the national debt to its limit, and further devalue the dollar. Confidence in the dollar is plummeting. Confidence in the euro has been shattered by the European bond crisis, and beleaguered consumers and investors are slowly but surely awakening to the fact that government-issued currencies do not hold their value. Currency is sound only when it is recognized and accepted as such, by individuals, through the actions of the market without coercion. Throughout history, gold and silver have been the two commodities that have most fully satisfied the requirements of sound money. This is why people around the world are flocking once again to gold and silver as a store of value to replace their rapidly depreciating paper currencies. Even central banks have come to their senses and have begun to stock up on gold once again. But in our country today, attempting to use gold and silver as money is severely punished, regardless of the fact that it is the only constitutionally allowed legal tender. In one recent instance, entrepreneurs who attempted to create their own gold and silver currency were convicted by the federal government of, quote, counterfeiting. Also consider another case of an individual who was convicted of tax evasion for paying his employees with silver and gold coins rather than fiat paper dollars. The federal government acknowledges that such coins are legal tender at their face value as they were issued by the U.S. government. But when it comes to income taxes owed by the employees who received them, the IRS suddenly deems the coins to be worth their full market value as precious metals. These cases highlight the fact 
that a government monopoly on the issuance of money is purely a method of central control over the economy. If you can be forced to accept the government's increasingly devalued dollar, there is no limit to how far the government will go to debauch the currency. Anyone who attempts to create a market-based currency, meaning a currency with real value as determined by markets, threatens to embarrass the federal government and expose the folly of our fiat monetary system. So the government destroys competition through its usual tools of arrest, confiscation, and incarceration. This is why I have taken steps to restore the constitutional monetary system envisioned and practiced by our founding fathers. I recently introduced H.R. 1098, the Free Competition in Currency Act. This bill eliminates three of the major obstacles to the circulation of sound money. Federal legal tender laws that force acceptance of Federal Reserve notes, counterfeiting laws that serve no purpose other than to ban the creation of private commodity currencies, and tax laws that penalize the use of gold and silver coins as money. During this Congress, I hope to hold hearings on this bill in order to highlight the importance of returning to a sound monetary system, allowing market participants to choose a sound currency will ensure that individuals' needs are met rather than the needs of the government. Restoring sound money will restrict the ability of the government to reduce the citizenry's purchasing power and burden future generations with debt. Unlike the current system, which benefits the Fed and its banking cartel, all Americans are better off with a sound currency. As we read that, you cannot help but think of the environment in which it was written, but also apply it to the environment of today. Obviously, the bill never passed, probably never even made it out of committee, because the system is indeed rigged. But he's a wise old sage, Ron Paul, somewhat of a wizard, in my opinion, and he knows a thing or two. Apply everything we read in that letter to what we are seeing take place now. And I urge you, even if you are, like me, a skeptic, a critic of the cryptocurrency world, but you are beginning to see perhaps a glimmer of, of light or hope coming out of it in just the threat that it is posing to the system. Apply some of those things we just talked about here. Taxation, incarceration, just the strong arm of the law, what government is willing and capable of doing in order to coerce and corral people. Thankfully, it appears that cryptocurrency might be a little bit more difficult for them to reach. It might be a little bit harder for them to control it, being that it's not as physical or as uh, visible even. It's not as visible to see how it's moving, I guess, in a community. There are ways of concealing it. Of course, they're going to attack it. We all already discussed what Feinstein is trying to do, um, you know, the insider that she is. Now, I would urge all of you to just consider those points. Um, if you can, I'll put the link in so you can read the article yourself, send it to others. But just uh, consider those points that Mr. Paul made at that time. Of course, at that time, that's the environment that brought about Bitcoin, uh, the, the economic collapse, the, uh, the, the crisis that we were seeing unfold globally, the, the inflating of, of dollars, of, of euros, of pounds, the bailouts, the quantitative easing, the easy credit. That environment spawned and caused the evolution, the, the origins of a new species, if you will. The origin of a specie, not being gold, but that of Bitcoin. And I I, I wish I could sit down. Of course, I never will. It would be, be impossible. I wish I could sit down with the designer or the, uh, 
designers, plural, and just find out what exactly was the goal, what was going on. Because I think many of you that know more about it than I do um, have a, a, an idea of what this means and what could possibly come of it. It'll be interesting to see, interesting to follow. And as I record this, as I make this video now, Bitcoin has breached 14,000 quite rapidly and is now at 14,300 US fiat paper dollars to the code, to the crypto coin, to the Bitcoin. Again, there is an infinite, infinite, unlimited supply of US Federal Reserve notes. And yes, many of them exist digitally. I mean, how many paper dollars do you have in your house stuffed in your mattress? How many does your bank have paper dollars? Many of the dollars that exist, exist merely as digits and promises in screens and in computers and in bank vault computers. So in a sense, the dollar is kind of a cryptocurrency, except it's more of a, a crypt. It's dead. It's a deceased carcass. It's rotting. It's an empty shell, a ghost of what it once was. I mean, how do we even still call it a dollar? We've been on this channel for years now. You guys know what a dollar is. We've talked about the origins of the word, how it goes back to the Wacom's taller, to the taller. It's based on silver, pieces of eight. It's not a, a dollar is actually a specific weight of silver, if we go back and look at it. There's no such thing as a dollar anymore. Don't even call them that. They're Federal Reserve notes. And they're not even notes half the time. You get paid in cash or you get a deposit in your bank or you get a check that you deposit. You're just a medium in which currency passes through. Does it matter where the currency's origins are? And do you want it to come from the will of the state or to be born perhaps out of the will of equal participants, equal willing participants, other humans that are most likely in the same position you're in that just want a place to put their labor for a little while until they can afford to buy groceries or precious metals or a piece of land in which to raise their family. There might be a secret war going on, something behind the screen, something in the other world, in the internet, a revolution perhaps, I don't know. I put the video out earlier, I don't know how many of you stayed for the whole thing to listen to it, but something's definitely going on. And I kind of hope it continues. I hope it wrecks things. I hope we breach the glass ceiling to quote the unmentionable. Let's shatter it. Let's, uh, let's bring it down. Let's bring down the fiat empire. I mean, who's with me? I mean, who really is with me on this? Are you? Or are you just, just going to sit there and is everyone just pretending? Because it seems like there's no unity. Seems like you got the crypto. Some of the crypto guys don't want anything to do with metal people. Some of the metal people don't want anything to do with the crypto people. Why don't you all be like the crowds? I hate bringing up movie references, but sometimes you just have to. You remember the scene in Braveheart when the two sides are rushing towards each other and a bunch of Scottish guys are on one side and then there's some Irish guys on the other. And when they all get in the middle, they all realize they know each other and some of them are, you know, there's just, there's like a relation there. Some of you UK guys on the channel have, better, have a better way of explaining this than I do. But they end up stopping on, on the battlefield, embracing, asking how each other are, and then they decide to all kill the British together. And that's a, it's a pretty beautiful moment for the movie. Let's all charge onto the battlefield against Fiat Empire together. I don't care if your sword's crypto, and I don't care if your sword's made of gold or silver or platinum or palladium. Pick it up and charge. Bring down the fiat empire. Thanks for being here. Unite down in the comments. Be together. Be one with each other. And know that we are indeed on the same side. Six Semper Tyrannus.